Hey y'all, we're coming at you from Byron Market in Ottawa. Today we're going to be talking to Youth Active Media about the idea of fake news and media literacy. So let's go! Let's do it! Okay, so today we're here to talk about media literacy and the difference between fake news, real news, and what it is that we should trust online and believe in. Why don't you guys tell me about the organization that you're a part of and um, how it is that you got to be in the position that you're in right now. Okay, me. Um, <laughs> I know, I just like... So, um, <laughs> myself and actually Nanik, we're part of Youth Active Media, and we're a program that teaches video production to at-risk youth around Ottawa, and we actually also hire youth that do the program as well. So yeah, it's a program run in partnership by Youth Ottawa and the Social Planning Council. And during the program, youth learn how to use video production to express issues that are close to them. Um, so I just want to know which platforms you guys use the most when it comes to social media or just online use, what your favorite is or the go-to media for you guys? You know those like tabs in Google that like give you little headlines and stuff? That's where I'll see a topic I'm interested in but I rarely click on those. Then I'll like do a little bit of research on that topic and then it's like you get the whole picture. Because if you look at different websites um, on the same topic, you can always see little bits of opinion or differences mm -hmm. in little things here and there. And it's like the more you look at, the more of a broader picture you have. Right. I like using CNN, like that's kind of what I usually go for. Like that's the notifications I have on my phone. <coughs> but I also like seeing like something like Democracy Now! and stuff like that, which are all similar, but kind of give a little bit of different information about the topics that I care about. And then obviously I'll see something like on Facebook, but I can't necessarily like trust Facebook that much. So, like I'll go and look into it like on the other websites that I do trust. So Facebook is more just like, oh, that's something that I want to know more about. Then you'll go to a different source yeah. to back it up kind of thing? Yeah. Okay. I use YouTube a lot very often, but just sort of in the way that you were saying you used Facebook, just as like a beginning point. Mm -hmm. And other times I'll, I know if I press like the home button on my phone and hold it, it will open up this Google recommendation page. Oh where it shows me different stories that are recommended to me. <laughs> you guys have to show me how to use that after. <laughs> and, and that's where I get most of my media, because it's all targeted towards things that some computers decided I will like, and most of the time is right. So. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I'm the same as them. So I like to keep up with my friends and family, so I use Facebook for that. And then if I see like news articles um, that are, intrigue me, then I go to multiple sources. I never read from just one website or like one article. Um, and yeah, and the Google notification thing, yeah. I use a lot too. That's a, good, that's a very good practice because we all know that there, there, there has been people, and me included actually, I'm not even going to exclude myself, where I've seen um, a media source that I think is reliable, so I just stick to that one. You know what I mean? And then the problem is with that, it, it, it kept me on a, on a path that didn't allow you know, others to come in, you know what I mean? I was set like, okay, this is what it is because I got it from this news source. But considering others, you know, it actually gives you a larger perspective on that issue and gives you a better way to combat that issue, you know what I mean? So that's a very good practice to have. So with all these different platforms, how do you guys know what to trust and what is real news? The biggest hint that something is uh, not real or is untrue is when you look at a whole bunch of different headlines side by side and there's little things that don't match up between them or maybe the most consistent one overall can sometimes be the right one. I think as citizens we have to have a certain amount of faith in journalism and in that kind of stuff and it's really really hard because you hear so many different things and it's about kind of trusting your instincts, seeing what makes sense, seeing what adds up. Obviously if something looks out of place there's a reason for that and kind of look into that for yourself if it's really bothering you. I try to stay conscious of the fact that everybody does have an opinion whenever they're relating news, even though they try to be as objective as possible in journalism, there's still going to be like that little bias. There's this picture um, of this event happening and it looks like, I don't know if people were bringing down a statue or something, and it looked like there were a lot of people um, in the photo, but actually the real photo, if you further it out a little bit, the crowd was just around the statue and then everything else was empty, right? So it's just the way that it's edited and relayed in the article that you consume. So um, off of that, is there such thing as fake news then to you guys? Is that even real or is it all just interpretation? What's real to you could be completely fake to someone else? Well, in interpretation um, is interesting because news uh, and journalism is supposed to be unbiased because that way people can form their own opinions from it. 
but when the person who's writing the article or the person who's taking the video or editing the picture takes their own interpretation of what happened and puts that onto it, all of a sudden you're not getting an unbiased, unopinionated article, you're getting something that's already been interpreted. So you're not interpreting from a pure source. And I think that's what fake news really is. I know that there's also straight up fake news. <laughs> <Yeah>. Like, um, <laughs> my cousin sent me this article, and there there was like a what two Chinese princesses doing something or other, and then she was like, she sent it to me, and she laughed, and she was like, yeah, they just photoshopped Korean pop stars onto that, and people were believing this whole like that they were wow. princesses from China instead. A lot of people don't check multiple sources, only rely on Facebook, and that's when fake news and such is spread around because. Someone like, I saw this thing where like a dog ate this child and blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, no, <laughs> he didn't. And it's like, I can't blame these people because like, it, like ignor it's ignorance and you don't know what you don't know. But these people are spreading around these things because not everyone has the patience or the effort or the time or even care to go check multiple sources. You have to be really invested in that, and it's a really small portion of the population. Yeah. I think, I guess, the thing you can do about that, then, is just educate the people that you can, right? And who are willing to be educated and to listen to you. Like, if somebody's like, oh my god, did you hear that this dog ate this kid? And then you're like, actually, no, they didn't. And, like, you explain to them about how that's, like, a source of fake news, that person has become more enlightened, right? And then, hopefully, they'd start to become more aware of what they're consuming and spread that around as well. Okay, so I just want to know what are some of the craziest clickbaits that you guys have seen? <laughs> um, a three-year-old baby eats pet rabbit, then escapes on a bike. Wow. Okay, <laughs> I don't know if anyone can beat that. No. I don't <laughs> Maybe we should have gone the other <laughs> way. <laughs> Funniest ones are when you're like in the grocery store, like in line, and there's the news, like the yeah, magazines. Oh, yeah. yeah. And then it'll be like about like actual like celebrities, and they'll be like, these people dated and then they did it and then they died and then they're dating and I'm like <laughs> <laughs> like the magazine ones are really funny and those are my favorite uh. <laughs> so what do you guys think about the fact that people make these headlines is it for attention why are they lying why kind of create this hype for no reason whatsoever so in my opinion I feel like when we consume social media it seems like everyone we're looking at is famous when you're scrolling through Instagram every thing you look at is famous I think there's lots of people who will do anything to get there, whether it's creating a fake headline that they know dogs walking 5,000 miles is going to definitely make some sort of news. So there, there's your story. Let's try and use that. Some of the time, um, fake news can be spouted from people wanting us to believe something. And a lot of the time, it's just people wanting their life to be more interesting and people wanting the world to be more like keeping up with the Kardashians. So those say these things wishing that they were real. They'll say a dog walked 5,000 miles and they knew the family members because all of a sudden their life is more interesting to other people. I would argue that's where the game comes from in regards to like tabloids. Like it gets your attention, you know what I mean? Like it's a ploy to gain that person's yeah, attention. So there's a business yeah. thing, there's a lot of stuff that drives those decisions, you know what I mean? And that's why it's like, it can literally come from your average everyday person to the head of a big company of a magazine or something. Um, I want to know what your opinion is on, I guess, who would be held responsible for these kinds of things? Or who's, like, is it something that we're just like, oh, this will always exist, get over it, move on, it's just always gonna be there, background noise, learn to deal with it? Or is it something that we're like, no, this needs to stop, this needs to change, and s there, there's somebody responsible for this? I think the most realistic thing is rather than um, yeah, holding people responsible to a point that it's a huge deal now, we teach our own generation why this isn't a good idea, so that way when we're writing those articles, it's not as big as a problem. Also, I would say as the reader, you know, do your best to kind of tell at least your peers that what, what's happening there is not the, you know, correct way of, of portraying whatever the issue is, you know what I mean? Like taking it upon yourself as well as the person who's writing it. Like you can't change what the person's written or, you know what I mean, you gotta, but up here, what you think, that can be changed. That's somewhere that I would comment. Like, even though, like, it might be, like, one person out of the ten people that, like, see it, and it'll be, like, at least someone will know that I don't think that's cool. And then maybe it'll change their opinion or something. It, it could, might yeah, not make it to the news stores. It might not, it could, though. You're not get, you never know. Yeah. And I feel like that ten seconds that it's going to take me to write a comment saying that, that you guys didn't do a great perspective or blah, 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 and it might just be enough for someone else to kind of, 
think about it also. And I think that's important to like kind of spread that you feel uncomfortable or you don't feel like that was okay. I even saw a, a study at some point done that someone being proven wrong is can hurt as much to your brain as actually being hit with a baseball bat or something like wow. that. Wow, that's interesting. Because you, you stand by your opinion so much that it can be super hard to yeah. to suddenly change it based on a comment. It, yeah. Comments are really useful for someone who's in between and say like a video may have con just barely convinced them to one side then a comment could convince them to the other side but if you're already gone to one side it takes a lot to change you back. Yeah, I guess that's the upside of video. I mean, <coughs> yes, you need to be aware that like there can be editing tricks and stuff, but especially if it's just run on footage, right? There's no editing tricks. It's not like they're framing it any closer, far away. You know that they're on location because it's like on a source that you trust. At the end of the day, video is like the seeing is believing thing. And so it, I think it's one of the more powerful modes of like expression and of storytelling and also just of like, you know, real life news to be able to see it and show your voice in a more visible context. I think it's really cool. <laughs> Yeah, so I guess just to round everything up, really use your sources to the best of your ability and really come up with, you know, your own understanding of whatever topic you're passionate about. Use your peers, use your voice, which is always a healthy thing to use. Yeah, yeah so thank thanks. you. Thanks guys so much for sharing. Yeah. So great to meet you guys. Stop fake news. <laughs> <laughs>